Hi, my name's Alice Casburn and I am a 21 year old event rider based in North Norfolk. I've competed up to a five star level on my mother's homebred topspin. I've always been based here in North Norfolk. My mum is also Norfolk born and bred and that's how I got into riding really. She competed at the five star level as well, such as the World of Equestrian Games. So I've always been brought up around horses. It primarily started in the North Norfolk Pony Club and I think that was a really good sort of foundation point and then I went in to do the sort of Eastern Region teams and then from there I went to do um, the Junior Young Rider Europeans and then on to Five Star. Eventing is, I think it's so special because of the sort of bond and relationship between us and the horses. I think, you know, to ask a horse to, to trust you at, you know, a really fast pace over sort of quite frightening jumps um, is, is really something special and I think that you know, any event you speak to will say the main part of it is the adrenaline. It's one of those things that every time you go out the star box you want to do it again and again and again. It's, it's addictive really. <laughs> I'd say my biggest achievement is either between the team gold and individual bronze at the Europeans last July or fifth at Burley. Burley sort of always been my dream really. Um, I used to go every single year with my mum and my mum once competed there and it's our sort of local really really big event so I think when you've been going somewhere ever since you were tiny um, to not just go there but but complete really really well was um, yeah definitely one of my biggest achievements. I'd say I got to this point mainly through hard work and, and perseverance. Um, Spin's definitely a difficult character um, he's really really tested my patience at times but he's been completely worth it so I think when you know that you've got a horse that has all the talent and just needs to put the hard work and the hours in it really motivates you to to do, to do that. I think my goals for this year are to enjoy it a little bit more. Last year I obviously had an absolutely fantastic year but I got quite overwhelmed by all the pressure and I sort of took the fun out of it a little bit by getting uptight and nervous so this year I, my plan A is sort of the same as last year. Hopefully head to badminton and have a really good confident run there and then head to Burley but I think I'm putting an emphasis this year on sort of taking a chill pill, relaxing and, and trying to enjoy every moment. Winning the FEI Rising Star Award in 2022 was a really special moment. I've always watched you know, other people get nominated and I actually nominated other people. Um, so to win an award like that, I guess it gives you a lot of confidence to think that you know, people think that you're deserving and you're obviously doing the right thing and making those steps towards being at the top of the sport. At the same time, it does add a little bit of pressure. You know, it makes your profile a little bit bigger. You have more people watching you and feel a little bit more expectation. But I'd say, no, it's, it's definitely a proud achievement and, and it's given a bit of both. Um, I think the last sort of couple of big events I've been to, the pressure has felt immense. Um, badminton last year wasn't too bad because I was a bit of a dark horse where I think the last couple of events, it's, it's really got to me. Um, I think what I've just tried to focus on is, is spending time and creating a proper relationship with my horse, not just in terms of actually working with him, but in terms of you know spending extra time with him in the stable and really creating that relationship because I think sometimes it's so easy to get caught up on when you're riding and that everything needs to be perfect rather than just spending some quality time. And, I think you've also just got to take every day as it comes, you know, I've written myself a 30 day plan so that one day I don't wake up and, you know, I don't particularly enjoy my dressage test so I'll wake up and think, oh gosh, I need to do dressage today and I think by having that 30 day plan that you stick to, you're making sure that you're doing exactly what's right for you and your horse at the same time and it's that idea of following the motions and just doing each day, each minute as it comes and just trying to keep you know, each day's plan in the forefront of your mind rather than the end goal. Badminton is such a special event mainly because of the atmosphere and I also think that a lot of the feelings that the riders get to us is that huge build up, you know, from months away you're looking at previews, yesterday we had the drawn order so I think, you know, there's a lot of build up in the atmosphere that everyone says when you walk through that arch out into you know where the spectators are it's a really really special feeling and I think that hits the nail on the head as soon as you turn up there it feels like a special event and the atmosphere is just incredible. I've not really naturally been a very very brave person it's something that I've had to really work on 
and I think one of the things that's really helped me to do that is especially the morning of cross country is to find a routine so I very much am a people person I love being around people where a lot of people quite like their quiet time so I like to have a bit of music on have some people around me and almost kind of forget that I'm riding until it really comes down to it I think also when I'm walking the course a lot of people like to they walk quite quickly and I'm the type of person that I think you can get quite caught up in wanting to make sure that you're walking at a reasonable pace but I like to slowly break all my fences down, take my time, look at my plans A, B, C and D and think of what could happen at every fence because yes you can walk the ideal line but the reality of walking around a track like badminton you're never going to have your ideal line so I try to sort of walk every line, think of every possibility and I think that's what's really helped me with my results. So my main horse is called Topspin, he's actually a third generation, my mum evented his grandmother up to advanced level and he's currently in the same field as his dam and his granddam lived in. Um, he's a bit of a family pet alongside you know competing up to five star um, but we've sort of gone up the ranks together which is really really nice so we have an incredible relationship. He's 15 this year so he's getting a little bit older but he actually only started his career I think in 2018-2019 so you know he show jumped up to then he did the veterans with my mum. He's a bit of a character he's incredibly sharp um, he loves to play um, and I've you know I think that's a sharpness that I've struggled with in the past but I think when you have a sharp horse you also have an incredibly talented and careful horse and that the two come hand in hand. Keeping Spin's concentration and focus can be quite difficult but he's a through and through competition horse and he absolutely thrives off the pressure. I think the differences that there are is that mainly when a lot of people warm up they sort of gradually jump a couple of jumps and, and slowly warm up so I would usually jump a couple of jumps and then I've got to put him up a gear and say come on we listen and the same was when I come out the start box a lot of people come out at a bit of a slower pace where with him I have to come out a bit quicker he thrives off the adrenaline and going fast so I think with him I've always got to come out the start box like I've got something to prove and he really thrives off that. Spin lives out 24-7 but his field sort of he can walk into the stable yard so he is always there whenever anything's going on in the yard. He has a bit of a habit in the morning of if you haven't fed him quick enough, he'll scrape his feed bucket up and down the wall and make a bit of havoc about it. Um, I typically ride in the morning and then in the afternoon he'll have a little session in the lunge pen, whether it just be playing about or a little bit of fitness. And then he's also fed sort of three times a day, morning, lunch and evening. Um, he's incredibly playful and his, his girlfriend Maxine is opposite so I think most of his days spent staring at her. <laughs> Spin's got quite a lot of thoroughbred in him and I'm a great believer in interval training so we do a lot of hill work. Hill work will probably be three four times a week. I try to keep the long canters at a minimum so that's probably every 10 days and we do a lot of sort of flat work, a lot of hacking and things like that and trying to find lots of variety in his work. Like I said, he's normally ridden in the morning and then he'll do the lunch pen in the afternoon. If we don't think he's quite fit enough, he'll normally do sort of 10, 15 minutes on each rein and it's also really nice for them just to go in there and to be able to loosen up as well. Spin is definitely incredibly uptight. Uh, um, stairway competitions, if I take him to hand graze it's more like he's lunging himself. Um, he does actually have a little mascot now called King Julian from Madagascar um, and it's really funny last year someone gifted me um, a Wilbur Wonder Pony and he absolutely loved it and it's really weird that it actually relaxed him in the stable so I think also he, he calms down a lot when I'm there so it's about you know giving him that time and hand grazing him and making sure that you know he's, he's out as out the stable as much as physically possible and you know I think I also take him on lots of hacks and things like that just to help his mind relax um, he absolutely thrives off cross-country day so that's normally when he's a little bit livelier um, but I think as the years go on he's getting a little bit more used to it now oh, to be honest most of the products I'll be taking to badminton are from Lemieux, they have such a diverse range with, with just about everything you could possibly want. If you think, you know, spin his stable boots, they will be from Lemieux, all of the sort of tack I'm going around, so my numna, all of my clothing, that's all Lemieux. So, um, yeah, I think most of the products will be taking Lemieux. Um, if you think as well, 
he'll probably stay in his in, in, in the Lemire rug and then he's got the cooling rug for when he's finished and the ice boots for the aftercare so everything Lemire. I think the products that I couldn't live without are the Freya breeches and the Pro ice, ice boots. We're really strict on aftercare especially on their tendons and I think when horses like spin are uh, working for a long amount of time sort of having you know they've got their foil lining which makes sure it stays cold for really long and the mesh um, stops the freeze burn so no I think it's really really good to, to look after their tendons and I like the fact that the ice boot in itself actually moulds around that. Um, the Freya breeches have an incredible full seat I feel really really stuck to the saddle and they've got such good durability I am known for you know having everything broken the horses I think it's really really hard to find stuff that withstands you know every sort of weather and everyday sort of use and I absolutely love the Lemire saddle pads. A lot of people know Lemire for their matchy matchy but really when you look at the technology inside of it they're made with the bamboo lining. Um, bamboo lining is absolutely fantastic because if you've got a horse like me that has really really sensitive skin um, it's really really soft on them and at the same time the bamboo lining also helps to control sweat so no I think that that's definitely one of my favourite products.